Good morning. Today I will talk about sea level data. But before I do that, let me talk very briefly about data. Since the late 90s, we have been living in the digital age. In 2020, we reached a peak of 44 zettabytes produced in one year. And that's a lot of data if you think that one zettabyte means one trillion gigabytes. The problem is that most of the data we produce in the digital age is unstructured. Unstructured data is information that does not have a predefined data model or is not organized in a predefined manner. Basically, it's data that is not included inside some sort of database. Unluckily, also scientific publications are in part a problem of unstructured data. And this is why the scientific community has been pushing more and more towards generating data sets coupled with scientific papers, so to give some structures to the data that is described in a paper. We have been thinking about such problems uh, within uh, the policy level community thanks to the Palsy project that has been sponsored by Pages and Inqua throughout the last 12 years. And we have been working a lot trying to define what are the needs of the community in terms of databases, what are the needs of the different users in terms of which kind of data must be made accessible and what is important to do in terms of giving structure to sea level data. The first result of that is not a result I achieved, but is a result achieved by Nicole Kahn and the whole sea community to which I was lucky to participate, uh, where we put together a global Holocene sea level database. And this work was very interesting because it put together a long tradition of sea level databases for the last 20 kilo years into a coherent global and organized sea level database. It was working together with Nicole and other colleagues in Olsi that I started to think that it would be very nice to have something similar for the last interglacial. The last interglacial is a very interesting period of time because uh, we know that sea level was higher than today, we know temperatures were higher, CO2 was close to pre-industrial values, so the last interglacial is really a process analog for a future warmer world. And there are sea level databases for this period, Cop et al, Hibbert et al, Pedoge et al, and many other regional databases, but they are all single spreadsheet databases. Well, when we looked at them, we quickly realized that actually Pleistocene sea level data is very complicated and a single spreadsheet database cannot render all the information that is needed to describe sea level index points for Pleistocene data. So this is the table structure we came up with uh, together with many colleagues within the Palsy community. Uh, each one of these boxes is one table and each one of these tables contains a lot of different columns. Each column contains metadata or data that can define together a sea level stratigraphy for the last interglacial primarily, but Pleistocene as well. To manage this kind of very complex database, we had to build an other complex structure around it. The center of this structure is a PHP interface and some Python scripts that support this interface, where everybody can basically um, subscribe for free, uh, log in, check which data there is inside the database. This is also available freely without registration needed. And of course, it is possible to insert your own data following the standardized template that we have inside all those tables. So you don't have to go through all the tables, but you have a readily available interface that can help you out filling a complex database such as this one. I think this was a winning approach because uh, uh, it would have been very difficult to convince uh, um, colleagues to fill in many database tables. Uh, but it was rather easy to convince them to subscribe to an interface which is easy to use uh, and start writing manuscripts. The manuscripts they wrote went into a special issue of the journal Earth System Science Data. And so far we have collected 19 manuscripts. There is, an, there is the last one ready to come, which is the editorial of the special issue, and we have 62 authors. And thanks to this interface and to the database, we could collect 4,500 sea level index points uh, of last interglacial age. And each one is connected with one or more dated samples. And inside each dated sample, you have geochemical values for those samples. This is 
in a few words Wallis. Wallis 1.0 is the first iteration of the database. You have here the link to all our resources. We have Python scripts, we have the interface, we have SQL data if you want to download the raw data set. And let me say that I'm extremely grateful to all the people who have been working on this database. This started as my own project within the European Research Council starting grant Wormcost, but it quickly became a real community project where everybody was contributing new data, new information and new insights on what should be in the database. And the database interface and the database structure evolved thanks to all the authors who uh, contributed data and provided insights on what they wanted to see in the database. Of course, a database work is not over yet. We have data gaps, there is areas where we know there are last integration C-level indicators but are not yet in standardized format. So I leave it here. If any one of you is interested to uh, work on some of these areas, please get in touch with us. We will be very happy to help you out, get started with the database interface and the nuances of the database. And with this, I'll take any question and I thank you so much. I am really looking forward to see how Wallis will be used in the future.